Thank you very much. Dear Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, my name is Jeremy Scott and I am Senior Counsel at the Electronic Privacy Information Center, also known as EPIC. EPIC is a public interest research center in Washington, D.C. It was established in 1994 to focus public attention on emerging privacy and civil liberties issues and to protect privacy, freedom of expression, and democratic values in the information age. As part of EPIC's open government work, EPIC makes frequent use of the Freedom of Information Act to obtain information from the United States government about surveillance programs. Public disclosure of this information improves government oversight and accountability. It also helps ensure that the public is fully informed about the activities of the government. EPIC routinely files lawsuits to force disclosure of agency records, and, is, and it is my understanding the committee is interested in EPIC's Freedom of Information Act lawsuits related to the U.S. government's use of Palantir software. EPIC has litigated two Freedom of Information Act cases that might be of interest to the committee. The first was a case against the U.S. Customs and Border Protection to obtain records related to the analytical framework for intelligence, which is used to assign risk assessments to travelers. The more recent lawsuit was against U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and it sought records pertaining to systems built on Palantir software. Uh, that system is the Falcon system, and the Falcon systems are built on Palantir's Gotham platform, a proprietary software product which allows users to search, visualize, and analyze complex data sets. Falcon serves as immigration and custom enforcement's primary data storage and analysis system. The Falcon system pulls data from several government databases and contains numerous categories of sensitive information, including biographical information, like dates of birth, places of birth, and social security numbers, and financial data, data such as bank account numbers and transaction numbers. The Falcon systems also contain data from commercial databases and open source information publicly available on the internet, including information from social, social media sites. According to the documents obtained by EPIC through the Freedom of Information Act, Falcon, Falcon systems also contain call record data and GPS data. And through the use of Palantir software, the Falcon systems are capable of linking together this and other data through social network analysis. The Falcon system uses the, the massive amount of data it contains and analyzes that data with Palantir software to locate undocumented immigrants to apprehend and deport. Reports indicate that the Falcon system was used in a raid last year in Mississippi that resulted in 680 arrests. The raid was one of the largest in U.S. history and terrorized the immigrant community in Mississippi and separated hundreds of individuals from their families. There's an ongoing campaign against tech companies like Palantir that provide the technical tools for ICE to, con to conduct raids like the one that occurred in Mississippi. Palantir is also linked to the United States Custom and Border Protection's Analytical Framework for Intelligence. It was, a docu it was the documents obtained by EPIC that confirmed Palantir's involvement in Custom and Border, Pro Border Protection's Analytical Framework for Intelligence system. The system uses information from federal, state, and local law enforcement databases, as well as commercial databases. This information is often sensitive personal information and includes biographical information, personal associations, travel itineraries, immigration records, and home and work addresses. The information is used to generate risk assessments of travelers and intelligence reports. The capabilities of the analytical framework for intelligence include the ability to perform geospatial link and temporal analysis of the data. In addition to Palantir's controversial work with the U.S. government, particularly the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Palantir has been scrutinized for the predictive policing service the company has provided to various law enforcement agencies within the United States. Palantir, Palantir's predictive policing services include identifying potential offenders and their networks. Palantir compiles a target list of likely offenders and victims based on analysis of mass data sets from a variety of sources, including social media, criminal databases, probation and parole information, jailhouse phone calls, automated license plate reader systems, and law enforcement case management systems, among other sources. Palantir's predictive policing product performs social network analysis to build webs, webs of social connections to identify potential offenders or victims without prior police contracts. 
These tools sweep in vast amounts of, of people that do not have a strong connection to any criminal activity. A couple of years ago, Palantir's work in predictive policing was scrutinized after it was revealed that the company had been secretly using the city of New Orleans to test its predictive policing technology. Palantir had a pro bono relationship with New Orleans, with the New Orleans police that was only known to the mayor and the city attorney. The city council members were unaware of the program until it was made public by news reporting. After the story broke about Palantir's work in New Orleans, the city ended the partnership. In almost every case, Palantir has sought to implement predictive policing without community knowledge or consent. In general, Palantir has tried to keep secret its capabilities and how the company's services are used by government entities. And with that, I would be happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Uh, Mr. Scott, thank you for joining us today. Um, Palantir is a new feature in Canada, um, and we're learning a great deal about them, partially because they went and hired the, our ambassador to the United States, and he got himself into deep trouble for lobbying when he was uh, not legally allowed to. Uh, we also learned that the Canada Pension Plan has become massive investors in Palantir. Um, so, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that Palantir came out of uh, the weaponization of data in in Iraq and Iran, Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, with money that had come from the CIA in in QTEL, their venture arm. Is that how there a lot of this technology developed initially? Uh, that is correct, Mr. Angus. Right, and I, I'm thinking of an article in Bloomberg I read in 2018 that said Peter Thiel's data mining company is using war on terror t tools to track American, citizen, American citizens. And the scary thing is Palantir is desperate for new customers. So the work that Palantir has done in terms of uh, the Falcon project going after migrants, work that was previously done going after uh, you know, counterinsurgents in Afghanistan is, was played out in the, in the United States streets. Does that create serious questions about the human rights abuses that have been linked to Palantir through Amnesty International and other studies? Well, it does raise questions. And part of the issue, obviously, is there's a lack of transparency with respect to uh, you know, the sophisticated data mining software that Palantir uses, the data that they have access to, and how that data is used uh, by the U.S. government and, and other governments. Uh, Palantir, um, the pitch that they gave here was doing pro bono, and my liberal colleagues have been sort of saying how great it was that everyone stepped up uh, to help out in the pandemic. So Palantir is just one of those good neighbors that showed up across our border willing to do stuff for free to help us. Our ethics commissioner didn't buy that story. He said, you offer pro bono, it means you're trying to get contracts. Um, do you think that Palantir is in the business of doing decent um, you know, neighborly kind of work or, or, you know, the fact that they had meetings with the ch our chief of defense, what, 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 what would you tell Canadians about um, trusting gifts coming from Palantir? You know, my uh, perspective would be similar in the sense that if they are offering pro bono, it's, it's for a reason, um, whether it's to get govern government contracts or, and or to basically get access to free da data to um, use and fine tuning their software offerings or both. That's a big part of their operation, right? Is getting the data. I'm I'm concerned about it because I mean they got to meet all the way up to our deputy prime minister, um, and yet Peter Thiel, when I've been looking up on him, he's been tied to extremist groups of, on the far right of America. He says, "quote I no longer believe that freedom and democracy are compatible in terms of the culture." Uh, that Palantir brings to this. Um, right now, Canada Pension Plan has become one of the largest investors in Palantir. And in the Canada Pension Plan, excellent group, have a human rights frame that they must, uh, a lens that they must apply when they're uh, seeking out investments. Would you believe that, or would you question whether CPP uh, had done the due diligence if they're willing to do business with Palantir? Uh, I would question whether they did the due diligence because of the way Palantir software is used to, um, you know, buy 
a government entity like Immigration and Customs Enforcement, which has been involved in some serious uh, issues uh, related to human rights with the way they've gathered and, and, and caged kids and separated families, et cetera. Yes, yeah, certainly we've seen uh, the footage of the caged children, and it's, it's been very, very, very frightening for us um, on this side of the border. So I want to thank you for that. I'm going to move now to